Greetings physics fam. Today we are going to be tackling velocity and speed. And as you can see from the top, speed is going to be just distance divided by time, but the velocity is displacement divided by time. So we want to start tackling that to better understand the difference between them and how we can get things plugged in in order to solve. If we take a look at number one, it says, Brett stands at the rim of the Grand Canyon and yodels down to the very bottom. So if this is me standing at the Grand Canyon, and I yodel to the bottom, that sound is gonna bounce off the bottom and come up to me. The problem says that he hears his yodel back from the canyon about 5.2 seconds later, which means that if I'm doing my guess method, here's my givens, I have 5.20 seconds as a time. Now here's the thing, we have to think about this realistically. The time it takes for our sound to bounce down and back up would actually be double the time it takes to just get to the bottom. Why am I saying that? Well, because I've read this problem before, it says the speed of sound here is 340 meters per second. So I'm gonna put that there, 340 meters per second is going to be the speed of sound. So that's going to be a speed given to me. We wanna know how deep the Grand Canyon is. So that is my unknown. I'm looking for how deep the Grand Canyon is, or we would measure that as distance. So that's really what I'm searching for. But here's the thing. If I have this information, the sound went down and bounced back up in 5.20 seconds. That's actually double the time I need. All I really need and want is the time it took to just get down to the bottom. So that really is half the amount of time that it took for the sound to get down there. So if I take 5.20 seconds and divide it by two, I'm gonna end up with 2.6 seconds for my actual time that I can use in this problem. So I'm gonna cancel and cross that out. I no longer need that original time given to me. A little crazy, right? We are no longer just plugging and chugging or reading to better understand the problem. Now that I have that, I'm looking, I have time, I have speed, and I'm looking for distance E stands for equation. I know the equation I'm going to use. Speed is distance divided by time. The next step in my guess method is substitute. So let's substitute in some information. For my speed, I have 340 meters per second. For my distance, I don't have it, so I'm going to leave it as a variable. And for time, I have 2.5 six seconds total. Now, if I want to solve for D, I'm gonna to need to get it all alone. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by 2.60 seconds. What is that going to do for me? It's gonna cancel out 2.60 seconds to leave D by itself. And now I'm gonna multiply 2.60 seconds times 340 meters per second. Throwing in that in my calculator, I end up getting 884. Now the question is, what will my units be for distance? Well, if you think about it rationally, distance would be measured in meters. So you just put meters, which is true. You'd be correct. However, if you're worried about the math working out and concerned about how did you end up with meters, we can do a quick unit analysis. As you recall, seconds in meters per seconds is what was multiplied together. If I take my meters per second, and I multiply it by seconds, you can tell that the seconds will cancel out and all I'm left with is meters. So it does end up working out for the answer. The final answer is 884 meters. Looking at the next question, number two, it says a horse racing record for 2.42 kilometer track is shared by two horses. So if I'm gonna do the guess method here, the given we have 2.42 kilometers is given. To me, that looks like a distance. Now, this distance is shared by two horses, Fiddle Isle, who ran the race in 143 seconds. So, looks like 143 seconds is a time that is given to us. Perfect. On March 23rd, and also the horse John Henry ran the same distance in an equal time on April 24th. What were the horse's average speeds? So, it looks like you for unknown we are looking for the average speed, and specifically in kilometers per second and meters per hour. 
So kilometers per second and meters per hour. Fine. For the guess method, E is next. If you take a look at all the things we've been given, speed is what we're looking for and distance and time we're given. Those variables all point to my equation, speed equals distance divided by time. Perfect. Now that I have that, I can start my substitution process, the S in my guess method. And let's see, subbing in S for speed, I don't need because I don't have it yet. I'm gonna solve for it. But my distance is 2.42 kilometers on top and 143 seconds on the bottom. If I crush those numbers together and divide 2.42 divided by 143, I end up getting about 0 0.0169. Let's leave it there, we'll round to that number. And that's going to be for my units, take a look, I put kilometers divided by seconds. So that's gonna be kilometers per second. Good news, I was supposed to find kilometers per second for one of my answers, so I got it, perfect. Now that I have that, it does say I wanna get that in meters per hour. So to convert it, let's make that happen. I'm going to take my number, 0 0.0169, and the units are kilometers per second. I'm gonna convert my kilometers to meters first. So I am going to put kilometers on the bottom and meters up on top so that my kilometers will cancel out. Now, I know that there are a thousand meters in one kilometer, so my kilometer units cancel out and I'm left with the units meters on top, which is perfect, that's what I want. Next then, I wanna get hours in the denominator and right now I'm in seconds. So, to get rid of seconds, I'm gonna put in the numerator, so the numerator and denominator cancel out, and I'm gonna convert that to hours on the bottom. I know for every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. If I do a little work, I see that seconds in the denominator cancels with seconds in the numerator, and what I end up getting is hours in the denominator. So meters per hour will end up being my answer. Love it, all right. With that in mind, I am then going to multiply my point zero one six nine times a thousand on top divided by one on the bottom times thirty six hundred on top divided by one on the bottom, and what I end up getting for an answer is about sixty thousand eight hundred and forty. And again, look at those units: meters on top, hours on the bottom, meters per hour. So those are going to be my two official answers for these problems. Perfecto. I like it. So that was number two, looking through, pulling out information and using it to the best of our ability. Checking out number three, it says for a long time, it was the dream of many runners to break the three minute mile. Now, quite a few runners have achieved that once seemed an impossible goal. On July 2nd, 1988, Steve Cram of Great Britain ran a mile in 3.01 minutes. Wow, okay, that's fast, but that's a given piece of information. 3.01 minutes, so that looks like a time to me, but also said he ran a mile. So one mile is a piece of information. That seems like a distance to me. During this amazing run, what was Steve Cram's average speed in miles per minute and miles per hour. Okay, so first of all, we want to find speed, so u is my unknown in the guess method, and we're looking for that in units of miles per minute and also miles per hour. All right, well, let's take a look at what equation can I use to solve that. I'm looking for speed, I've got distance and time, so I'm going to use my speed equation because it uses all three of those variables. Speed equals distance divided by time. Love it. Let's move on then to S in the guess method, which is substitute. Let me substitute in. I don't have speed, so I'm gonna leave that variable. But on top is distance, which is three, whoops. That's not true, it's not three at all. It is one mile in three minutes, so. I'm gonna put one mile up on top, MI for short for mile, and 3.01 minutes 
on the bottom. All right, S stands for solve. So let's see here. I'm gonna take one mile divided by 3.01 minutes. And when I do that, I get about, oh, I don't know, 0 0.33. 0.33 miles per minute. Now here's the deal. That is one of the answers that I needed in miles per minute, but I also need miles per hour. So let's just convert that miles per minute to miles per hour. And I can definitely do that. I have got three point, I'm sorry, 0.33 miles for every minute. And now I wanna keep miles, but I wanna get rid of minutes. To do that, I'm gonna put minutes on top so that the numerator and denominator cancel, right? And then I also wanna get it into the units I need it to be in, which is hours. So now that I know minutes on top, hours on the bottom, I know that there is for every one hour, 60 minutes, so I can use that equivalent. Don't forget to double check your units. Will my minute on the bottom and top cancel? Yes, and I'll be left with hours on the bottom, which is what I need, love it. So let's take that 0.33 miles times 60 divided by one. And what do I end up getting for an answer? About 18 and the units is going to be miles per hour. So 18 ends up being the answer. And there you go. We worked through it, used the equation, solved the problem, made sure it made sense, and then converted when needed. Easy peasy, mac and cheesy, my friends. Keep going, thanks for following along. Let's try one more together, let's do number four. During an Apollo moon landing, reflecting panels were placed on the moon. This allowed Earth-based astronomers to shoot laser beams at the moon's surface to determine its distance. Wow. The reflected laser beam was observed at 2.52 seconds after the laser pulse was sent. All right, so here's Earth, here's the pockmarked moon, cha. We're gonna shoot that laser and it's gonna come back to us. All right, so that happened in the given time of 2.52 seconds, fine. If we know the speed of light is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, ooh, that's a speed given to us, I like that. Three times 10 to the eighth, what is that? 300 million meters per second? That's pretty far, it's pretty fast speed. If that's the speed of light, what was the distance between the astronomers and the moon? So we are looking for the distance. Here's the deal. If you, did you catch it? It takes the time for the laser to go there and back. So that time is actually double what it takes to just get to the moon. So we need to divide that time in two. So to do that, I'm just gonna put in my calculator 2.52 and divide it by two. And that means it's about 1.26 seconds now just to get to the moon. We took out the other returning laser beam to the Earth, so. All right, so now we've got our times and our speed. I think we should be good. E in our guess method is the equation. It looks like we've got speed, time, and distance, so we are going to use the speed equals distance over time equation. Love it. Let's start substituting in then for that. I'm gonna switch my colors to red. So substituting in, do I have speed for my S? Yes, I do. I've got 3.0 times 10 to the eighth, and that's in units of meters per second. What's next? Do I have my distance? No, I'm solving for that. Do I have my time? Yes. We figured that out, 1.26 seconds. All right, I love it. The only question is, how do I solve for that? No problem, to get D by itself, I'm gonna multiply both six by 1.26. So multiply times 1.26. I'm gonna bring that unit along with as well. That's gonna cancel out the 1.26, which is going to leave me with D alone on that side. I'm then going to do my three times 10 to the eighth times the 1.26 seconds. And when I do that, I end up getting a pretty large number, 378 million for my distance. Now the question is, if I'm answering in distance, what should my units be? Well, if you naturally think, well, distance would be in this equation M for meters. You're right, it would be meters. But let's make sure that the units actually do that with the math. So if you look, I did meters per second times second. Let's just make sure if I do meters per second times seconds, 
what happens? Well, the seconds do cancel out because they're in the numerator and denominator, so meters is the only unit left, which means, yes, we got that right. So well done. The distance between the Earth and the Moon, according to this problem, is 378 million miles. If you convert it to kilometers, that'd be 3,007, I'm sorry, 378,000 kilometers. That's still really far. So even though the Moon is really far away, it still looks pretty big to us in the sky. That's how big the moon is. That's pretty amazing. Well, hello again, it's me. Let's go to number five here and rock out our last problem. Feeling good, and I hope you are too. So the peregrine falcon is the world's fastest known bird. It has been clocked diving downward towards its prey at a constant velocity of 97.2 meters per second. That is pretty amazing. So the velocity is 97.2 meters per second and that's technically going downward so we could either say it's going downward or technically we could use a negative for that variable saying the positive is up and negative is down all right if the falcon dives straight down the height of 100 meters wow that means if we're dealing with velocity and it's diving straight down technically this is going to be the displacement so that thing went 100 meters down Awesome. So they're both going down in the same direction. The question is, how much time does it take <laughs> to reach that rabbit? So basically, if that falcon's coming at you, how many seconds does that rabbit have? Let's see. Uh, if that's the case, I think I'm looking for T, solving for time. When I look at all that information, looks like I've got velocity, displacement, and time. I'm definitely going to be using my equation for velocity, which is velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. Remember, delta x is changed position, or displacement. So I'm gonna do s for substitute in there. I've got my v variable. Now, by the way, technically, since these are down, I can give both of these negatives. They're in the negative direction, downward. Let me show you when I plug in with the negatives how the negatives won't matter for time because you're thinking, wait, 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 if we end up with time in the negatives, how can you do that? Well, we won't. It's going to cancel out. Let me show you. So first of all is velocity. So we're going to do negative 97.2 meters per second velocity. Then I'm going to do my displacement, which is negative 100 meters. And then my time is on the bottom. Almost said temperature there, but that's not right. So time is on the bottom, I need to solve for it. So time has to get into the numerator. So I'm gonna multiply that. I'm now gonna have T times, uh, T time, T times 97.2 negative meters per second equals negative 100 meters. All right, to get T all by itself, just like me at freshman year homecoming, I'm gonna divide by negative 97.2 to both sides and that's meters per second units. So that T is now all alone. T ends up equaling negative 100 divided by negative 97.2. What you end up getting for an answer, because a negative divided by a negative is positive, you end up getting 1.03 seconds for your answer. Whoa, so if you are 100 meters away from a falcon, okay, that's, uh, think about it like a football field. That's not exactly a football field, but think of it that way. If you are a football field's length away from a falcon in just slightly over one second, that falcon could be there pecking at your eyes. Isn't that amazing? That's an incredibly fast animal. Regardless, my friends, thanks for hanging in there. Hopefully you're starting to see the value of the guess method in organizing your materials. And then of course, hopefully you're starting to see the importance of math skills with looking at things like these units up here and how they cancel, and of course, solving for different variables. Keep plugging along, physics fam, sending love. Take care.